hello and welcome to my youtube channel in today's video we're going to be doing a very pretty bluebell wood and we're going to be keeping it quite impressionistic and abstract it's a lovely time of year to have a go at painting bluebells they're just starting to show a bit of color now and they'll be probably fully flowering next week i would think so before you begin this when you're doing anything where you're working quite quickly wet in wet an important thing is to really have all your materials to hand so spend a little bit of time getting everything ready and together you don't want to be having to look for it later when your paintings drying um, and you might end up with it drying too much whilst you're off hunting for the next material that you need and then you need to spend some time getting your colors ready so mix some nice greens blues yellows everything that you see in the tree in the uh, sorry not in the tree in the wood there um, you may have different colour choices to me, we all see colour quite differently but also you might not have the same ones available to you that I've got so just work with what you've got. I used a sap green, I used cadmium yellow, I used French ultramarine, Windsor violet, Windsor blue, um, yellow gamboge, new gamboge and I also used some burnt sienna mixed with the ultramarine and with the Windsor violet to get some darker colours as well. So once you've got your watercolours together, you need to get your wax resist as well. So I'm using um, wax pastels. Don't worry if you've not got wax pastels. You could use some ordinary wax crayons. Um, even children's Crayola crayons are absolutely fine. If you've not got any of those either, you can use a candle for resist if you want to just highlight some light areas. Or you can just leave those areas of the paper dry or lift out with your tissue afterwards whilst everything's wet so there are several things you can do if you haven't got the wax pastels so don't worry about that you can still make a nice abstract painting so when you're working wet in wet you want your subsequent mixes to be slightly thicker than the last ones so when you begin this painting you want all your paints to be a similar consistency when they're all different consistencies that's when you get a problem because if you've got a thicker consistency on the paper and then you add a thinner one i.e with more water that's when you get what we call these cauliflower effects or these blooms you'll see as i go along i actually add paint straight from the pan and that's a nice thing to do right at the end if you want to intensify some of your colors i did actually feel that i could have made my colors a little bit stronger when it dried i felt like it needed to be stronger in color but at the same time it was nice to allow the white of the paper to shine through because there's a lot of light bouncing around this woodland picture so do use the white of your paper do leave some areas of, of white to have that sky shining through i didn't actually put a blue in the sky you might like to put some blue in the sky and you could do that first you could put a very pale blue wash on let it dry and then put your wax on top of it so you don't have to do things exactly in the same order as me there are all sorts of different ways of working i just thought it was a really easy quick subject to do to do in this impressionistic style and then you could develop it and you might like to do more bluebells just on their own um, you know some single bluebells and use quite watery mixes for those as well and just have a bit more of a, a study with them closer up so I think that's about everything I need to tell you I'm just thinking if I've forgotten anything always have tissue to hand you can lift some color out with that especially if it starts pooling again you want a good heavy paper to absorb that water um, and you'll have less problems if you buy a decent paper to begin with and it's nice and heavy so the paper I used I don't I can't remember if I told you this or not this is actually my third recording I'm having problems with this microphone and if I don't do it all in one then it seems to miss little bits out so I'm not going to pause it at all so if, <laughs> if I forget what I'm saying do forgive me but the paper I used was a mixed media pad but the main thing is have, have a nice heavy paper you might want to use a watercolor one um, I think that's about everything if there's any questions about the process that I've missed out please do put those in the questions comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can um, otherwise I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to say about this I mean it's something you could do with any kind of a garden scene is just have your colors ready so where you're spending your time really is mixing and thinking about it to begin with which colors you want to use some of you may have noticed I've not been on YouTube much recently. I do apologise for that for those of you that were wanting to see more tutorials. I think really lockdown kind of concentrates our minds and I have decided to put more of my energies into my own work rather than necessarily my tutorials all of the time. I still have some tutorials on Skillshare as well. I did another one last week. I will link that down below. That's a full one hour tutorial 
um, step by step watercolour and ink and that is of a nice Lake District scene so you might like to want to go and have a look at that but when I find time I will be doing more YouTube tutorials um, it's just fitting it in with everything else that's going on at the moment that's a little bit of a problem but I will try and find that time so thank you very much for joining me again today um, and I will be back with you again soon enjoy your painting and drawing I do hope you get a chance to have a play with some of these ideas and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching and bye for now.